everybody, Ian here at Able Cine in Burbank, and today we're looking at how to link your RAW files to your proxy files. So I got my RED here, I'm recording R3Ds and ProRes, and we're going to do a round trip from Premiere to Resolve, and then back into Premiere. And I've opened up my drive, I use Shotput to offload the uh, footage from the RED mag, and I organize it using a program called Post Haste, free uh, software that organizes your workflows and you can customize it to however you want it. So this is one of my uh, default setups for post work. And in a folder called footage, you see I have uh, made a folder for ProRes and I made one for the R3D. Nothing in ProRes yet because I'm going to go down and look at the R3D and I use Shotput. So the nice thing about Shotput is that it made a report for me. So if I open that up, you can see that there's all my shots and all the data about the shots. So very nice to have that. But we're going to go in here into the RDM. That's sort of the master folder for red files. And the RDC holds the uh, information per take. So you can see I have clips two through six here. And also notice that within each of the takes, I have an MOV and I have a corresponding R3D. So the first step in the process is I'm gonna take these MOVs, or these QuickTimes, open up Premiere, import them, and make a uh, edit. I'm opening a new project in Premiere. I wanted to show you uh, where I'm going to route uh, to save the information about my edit project. So under Browse, I went into my um, post haste folder again and I have a folder preset up for Premiere so I'm going to choose that and now it knows where to route the footage this is just going to make it very easy to do those links uh, later on I've assembled uh, footage here on my timeline so if I play this out for you it's just three different angles that I got with the movie there's M inside with the camera. All right, so that's uh, my footage there. I'm going to do two things. First thing, I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to Export, and I'm going to export something called an EDL. And what the EDL is going to allow me to do is it's allowing me to take these 2K ProRes files I just edited and use their time code, frame accurate information, and link it to the R3D files in Resolve, so I have a frame accurate sequence in Resolve. So I'll just call this proxy movie. And I'm going to click OK, and it's going to go into the Premiere folder in my post haste uh, setup. So let me save that and let's verify that. So there's Premiere, and there's the EDL. Very good. The second step that I'm going to do is I'm going to export a uh, movie of this sequence. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to use that as a reference to make sure that the sequence I'm going to build in Premiere is frame accurate. So to do that I'm going to go to File and I'm going to Export Media and I'm going to set up my preferences here and I will export a little movie. Before I get too far into this project, I just want to make sure that I set my master settings for UHD or 3840 by 2160 resolution. And I've opened up the uh, project settings tab and verified my master settings here. I've opened up a project in Resolve and I have gone to my RDM folder and notice here the clips up here and I drag them down here. Now this is something that I've seen people do frequently and it's you know, the source of some confusion. Notice where uh, my highlight is on this first clip and notice what the metadata is telling me. It says ProRes 422HQ and then right next to it is an R3D RED file. And the reason this is happening is because remember I said when we recorded that sequence outside we were recording both the R3D and the QuickTime on the same RED mag in the same folder. So when I drag those shots into the media pool of Resolve, it brought everybody into the pool at the same time. So if I was to keep it this way, uh, this would cause real confusion on Resolve's uh, part because it wouldn't know whether to link to the Apple 
in this case, low-res movies versus the high-res uh, red R3D files. So I'm going to go through here. You notice that it, the sequence is always the same. It's an apple and then it's a red. It's apple red, right? All through the sequence, exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and just take the ProRes files out of the media pool to avoid any confusion. Now that I've removed those ProReses, I just have my R3Ds in here. Now if I go down the line, it confirms R3D. But notice some of these still have sort of that look of 709 to them. And what you have to make sure of when you, this is more of a color correcting uh, workflow side note here. You wanna make sure that uh, you have your camera raw and your project settings set up for red. So here I have set it up for red. Uh, and you can see that I have uh, base decoding on a project and I've chosen IPP2 and I have a wide color gamut and the log 3G10 selected. I also went and checked off to use the ISO that I shot the footage with and use the uh, color temp that I had the camera set to. Once you have those and I select each of these, you'll notice that they're going to start looking like log as they should. All right, well, here's the next thing. I think I had like three shots in that uh, edit sequence. I'm not quite sure, but I know that I have more shots in my media pool than I'm going to use. So I need to, in a typical uh, color grading situation, I would go and then select all these tabs and I would tell Resolve to create a timeline based on those clips. But I want a frame accurate uh, timeline that replicates what I did in Premiere. I'm going to go over to the edit tab. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to import that information from Premiere. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to Import Timeline, and I'm going to choose an EDL. That's the file that I created in Premiere. So if I do that, I'm going to go over to my drive, back into my Post Haste folder, into Premiere folder, and there is an EDL. That's the instructions to build the timeline and resolve. So I'm going to hit Open, click OK. And now I have a timeline of red raw files based on the edit in Premiere. But I want to make sure, what's really important here, is that the uh, edit that I have here is frame accurate to the edit I had in Premiere. So I need to reference that. I'm going to go back into my Media tab, and I have exported a movie from Premiere and I called that my reference movie. So I'm gonna go down to um, a folder called reference movie, and there it is. Instead of dragging that into the media pool, I'm going to click on it so it gets that amber highlight, control click, and I'm going to add as offline reference clip. As soon as I do that, it populates into the media pool and see it gets that little checkerboard right there. All right, so now I need to link the reference to the timeline. And to do that, I'm going to select the proxy movie. This little icon represents this edit timeline right here. So make sure it's selected. You got the amber highlight around it. You're going to control click and you're going to go to timelines, link offline reference clip notice that this number references the number in the browser and now those two are linked together now i need to check and make sure that that actually worked so i'm going to go to my uh, back into my edit tab now sometimes when you try this you're going to go here and you're going to say or experience this hey it's just black there's nothing there Make sure, so just so we're clear, what you're seeing right here is right here. Okay, this is the edit sequence of the red files. Go in here and make sure that you have offline selected. Now notice on the left hand side you got the 709 kind of saturated uh, look here. That is the uh, edit from Premiere 
and on the right is the edit in Resolve. So I'm going to scroll down here. You have to bear with me. I'm doing this on my laptop, so it uh, takes a little time for it to, to match up. So there's a little bit of a lag, but notice that the frame looks right. So now what I'm going to go do is go frame by frame here in this sequence. And I want to make sure that these two line up to one another. And specifically where I want to make absolutely sure that they link up is when I come to an edit. So we're going to just scroll frame by frame here. Okay, this looks good. This looks good. Looks like the ProRes takes the lead here and then the RAW catches up to it. Okay. All right, that's what I wanted to see. Notice that we go from the profile to over the shoulder. Let's go back one frame. Lines up. All right, so that lines up. So let's roll down to the next edit here and make sure that these guys, and I apologize, my laptop is trying to do these uh, big resolution files. Okay, so here we go. So here's the over the shoulder. It looks like the car is absolutely on track here. So we're just going to patiently go down here until I get to the next edit. Should only be a couple of frames here. All right, and it is frame accurate. So if I go back one frame, match. Go to the next frame. Okay, let's go down a little bit here. Yep, everything looks good. And again, we'll look for that cut. All right, so I'm very happy with this. This looks frame accurate. So now I can go ahead and I can uh, do my color correct. I've just done the world's fastest color correct on this. I got basic look that I like. And now what I want to do is take this and I want to put it back into uh, Premiere. So to do that, I'm going to go into my Deliver tab. There's my sequence. And I'm going to, first of all, set a destination. Before I do that, let me show you this up here. So up here, you have the ability to either set up a uh, custom settings or you can go to these predetermined ones. And I'm gonna, I've chosen Premiere because what that's going to do is optimize the settings for Premiere, plus it's gonna give me something called an XML file, which is gonna repopulate uh, the cuts that we have here in Resolve. So all I'm gonna do is browse here and I'm going to set it into my post haste uh, folders again, but I made a resolve export 4k uh, destination for that information. Notice that I'm doing ProRes uh, 422 HQ, but I'm going to make the output as 3840 by 2160. We're going to assume that uh, the deliverable is going to be a UHD. The other thing that I did was I came down here and uh, under a tab uh, that says advanced settings right here as I went in and I chose for sizing to highest quality and de bear to highest quality I'm going to add that to the render queue and I'm going to start rendering out So I created this uh, destination for my uh, 4k output from resolve and here is the contents of that that's the XML and the uh, clips associated with it. So let's go over to Premiere. And here's our sequence. This is the 2K sequence that we're looking at right now. And I'm going to import the 4K. All right, there it is. And we have a sequence in here that's 4K. If I hover over each of the individual clips, you'll see that video is 3840 by 2160. That's great. So I'm going to grab this sequence and I'm going to drop it on top. And when I look at the properties of it, 3840 by 2160. So we're all set. So now we can go ahead and do our graphics. And you can see we have our time sequence in 3840 by 2160. And we're all set to add lower thirds or graphics.
That wraps up my look at how to simultaneously record a proxy and a high resolution and high data rate file in a camera. I use the RED because this functionality is built into it, but if you have any camera that is capable of a proxy and a higher resolution or data rate file, this workflow will apply as well. Just make sure that the clips share metadata and time code. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.